What's going on everybody? Nazdarachi here again. I'm uh, back this time with the Relic Review episode for Banner 2 for A Love for All Time, the Final Fantasy VI event. Now I just completed the Sid mission, so in theory I probably shouldn't draw on this banner because obviously my synergy for Final Fantasy VI is pretty good already, but I also love the game just so damn much that I cannot keep myself away. So your first Relic here save the queen is Celis's OSB move. I absolutely would love to have this move, but it is a six star sword here, 169 attack, very good, better than clouds even. Unfortunately the bonus effects are synergy required for a small boost of holy damage, so that is shot down by other holy swords for Paladin Cecil and as well the Saintly Excalibur. But the open strike soul break here, blade unbound, Deal massive physical holy and win damage to one target. Deals more damage for each magic attack the user has taken, up to four stages of damage increase. Now, the subtext here that's off the screen is just any magic attack that hits her is going to add to this counter, whether it be black magic from the enemy, or white magic like heals, or shelga from the team. So any magic that hits her up to four times is going to buff this ability. Now, because of that, I'm going to put it on just the very slightly below average mark. We tend to want to favor overstrikes that just come out of the gate strong. But, the trade-off to that is, if you can get all four stages, the damage multiplier on this probably will be a tad bit higher. And, I love Celis to death, so I would not mind drawing this weapon at all. It seems like your percent chance to pull this sword is about 1.08%. On to the next item here is a burst soul break for Celis. This one's been around for a while. It is the Lightbringer, attack 128. This sword does have a constant holy boost. Small, but it is constant with no synergy required. And the burst soul break, Maria's Song. Temporarily raise the attack and magic of all allies a moderate amount, and grant haste and burst mode to the user. Temporarily infuse the user with the power of Holy Light. Now, this is not quite as good as the buff you get from Onion Knight, because he haste is the whole team, whereas only Celis gets haste in this situation. But it does up her power a little bit. Her burst abilities, Art and Blade, deal four physical holy and fire attacks to one target, and Frizzard Blade, deal four physical holy and ice attacks to one target. Both very similar, just different elements behind them. Obviously, they will be boosted by any type of record material you have that boosts Spell Blade power, but all in all, they're not really noteworthy other than four attacks isn't bad at all. Now, your odds of drawing this item are about 0.89%, so relatively low. Celis is getting a second burst soul break in the future, and it is going to vastly outpower this one, so do not be sad if you're a Celis fan and you really want this sword, because her second burst soul break, like I said, is going to be a lot better than this one. So no worries there on the low percent chance to draw. Moving on, we have an item I am highly interested in. It is Kefka's Burst Soul Break, Dancing Mad. Dancing Mad also being a great music track. No bonus effects, sadly, but 81 Attack, 131 Magic, and 63 Mind. These Burst Soul Break being Symphony of Madness here. Deal 8 Magic, Poison, and Non-Elemental Attacks to random targets. Temporarily infuse the user with the power of Poison, and grant Haste and Burst Mode to the user. Your burst commands here, Rot and Ruin, deal 4 magic, poison, and dark attacks to one target, and Jester's Dance, temporarily lower the attack of all enemies a large amount, with a small chance to slow them as well. Now this is a very good burst soul break. It's not in the top tier of mage soul breaks, because the damage output on it's not going to be as high as ones you see where 
the second command will be a bargain to increase the user's magic, and then maybe variable attacks on the first command depending on how high their magic stat is. Those are always going to have the highest damage potential, but not only does this one have a fairly high damage potential, but it also has some really good debuffs here. So the lowering the attack of all enemies a large amount will stack very well with full break and other moderate breaks and small breaks. So that's a good one to have for a mage. Mages you don't normally see with support abilities, but it's because this one's in the dancer category that it gets that characteristic. As well, Rotten Ruin, dealing four magic poison and dark attacks to one target, four attacks never hurts, and many enemies you can find some use in either dark or poison. Especially if you're teaming them up with other dark or poison characters like Edgar and or Sid Reigns, for example. So, all in all, great item. I would love to get this one, and it seems like your percent chance to get it is about 1.08. Moving on, we have the Mirasame for Cyan here. It is a katana, so that potentially puts it on the list of usable weapons for Sephiroth as well, if you have nothing else for him. Attack 135, no bonus effects whatsoever. Your burst soul break here is the Bushido Tempest. Deal 8 physical attacks to one target, raise the critical hit chance of all allies a large amount, enable the user to temporarily counter attacks, and grant haste and burst mode to the user. Now that has some good damage, and as well, the critical hit chance to all allies a large amount will stack very nicely with other offensive buffs that you get from say Onion Knight or Ramza. The enable the user to temporarily counter attacks can have mixed results. Cyan is primarily a samurai, so I'm not entirely certain if you can set him up with a draw fire move or not. If you can, that will increase the usability of this a lot. And I may sound like a scrub not knowing that, but Cyan is not one of my leveled characters. All I know is that he's a samurai. But the countering attacks really shines when you have draw fire alongside it. But even still, this is not a terrible burst soul break. And it's cool that Cyan's getting some love as well. Burst abilities, Claws of Doma. Deal physical damage to one target, healing the user for a portion of the damage dealt. One attack, not terrifically useful, but the heal can help you out in a bind. And Blades of Doma, deal four physical attacks to one target, temporarily lower the user's defense, and raise the user's attack a moderate amount. So he does have a nice bargain ability on Burst Command 2. Obviously you want to lead with that one. And because it deals four attacks, you might as well just continue to spam Blades of Doma, unless you really need a heal. I have no hate for Cyan, but I have no particular use for this item at the moment, other than to give Sephiroth a weapon. So, I'm not too sad, but the chances of drawing it seem to be about 1.08% as well. Next item is Kefka's Super Soul Break, so we're out of the burst category now. It is a instrument, deals 79 attack, 124 magic, 63 mind, no bonus effects whatsoever, and your Super Soul Break Forsaken Null. 7 magic non-elemental attacks to random targets and reduce the offensive magic casting time of all allies for 3 turns. A little bit below average super soul break, but if you're running a mage meta or a full mage party, uh, you know, for just whatever reason, if that's what your strongest team is, or if you're doing, for example, a black magic nightmare 6 star record dungeon, then it probably is actually a little bit above average. The reduced casting time to ninja level speed can have its utilitarian uses, but overall, outside of that mage theme, you're not going to get too much functionality out of that. But it has a reasonable damage potential, so I don't know. It is okay. If you're using Kefka, you really want his burst soul break, but you might find some use out of this flute as well in certain situations. Your chance to draw this instrument here is about 2.13%. Next up we have the Gaia Bell from Mog here. Super Soul Break Earth Blues, which is a dance from Final Fantasy VI. I remember that one. 
80 attack, 68 magic, 128 mind. Bonus effect, small boost to earth damage at all times. So that's kind of useful, but being as it's an instrument, I'm not really sure if there's a wide variety of characters that can really benefit from that. Super Soul Break Earth Blues, deal 6 white magic earth and non-elemental attacks to all targets, and temporarily lower their attack and defense a large amount. A reasonably stackable buff, and the attacks, mm, not going to have the highest damage output off of those, but uh, they can come in handy, I guess. Really, you're using this as a support ability. The breaks can stack pretty well with full break, and as well any move that does a small break amount. So again, more of a strategic utilitarian move. Not bad for a super soul break, but definitely not one of the best. It seems like you have about a 2.48% chance to pull this item as well here. Next up we have the Imperial High Blade for General Leo here. General Leo is one of my favorite characters who is always sitting on the sidelines, even in Final Fantasy Record Keeper. Attack 132 and no bonus effects. Super Soul Break Shock, deal 6 range physical holy and non-elemental attacks to all targets and temporarily lower their resistance to holy. Damage dealt increases when facing fewer enemies. So this is identical to Rufus's Soul Break and it's holy instead of whatever element I think poison or dark Rufus's is. Pretty sure it's dark. I could be wrong there, but regardless, this is exactly the same as Rufus's Soul Break, and this is all he has. Because of that, and a few other little character issues that he has, mostly that he's just a knight, he can use full combat abilities too, so he's definitely useful. But the fact that he just has no other soul breaks in the game kind of really benches him. I love this character and in the future, I hope they add more stuff for him. But unfortunately, he's kind of really just a side character now that you really just use if you really like him. Your chances of drawing this item are about 2.24%. I wouldn't be upset if I drew this item, but I also wouldn't be happy. Uh, that's for you guys. Now, I don't want this item because I already have it, so, and it's mastered already. It's not one that I need to six star because I have plenty of synergy swords that have bonus effects. Anyways, that's, that's it for poor General Leo. Moving forward again, we have a rod for Strago here. 55 attack, 128 magic, 105 mind, mighty guard. Final Fantasy VI, grant protect shell to all allies and temporarily raise their resistance a large amount. I'm going to place this on the upper average scale of Super Soul Breaks. Any Super Soul Break that gives you protect and shell and raises their resistance a large amount can definitely free up ability slots on white mages. Strago, I have no desire to use him, so honestly I hope I don't get this item. But as a newer character coming into the game, if you do pull this, this would be a character to immediately add to your roster because this protect shell to all allies can really make your team more versatile and it can definitely help you out, especially against dungeons where you're starting to reach your limit of playability. You'll be a little bit stronger and you can potentially pack more cures or more offensive abilities to help take down you know, whatever situation you're in. So late game players probably won't appreciate this too much unless they're going just for 100% completion. But, you know, Strago is just not a super popular character, but this is a very good Super Soul Break. The chances of pulling it are about 2.01%. And hopefully none of y'all's houses burned down quite like Strago's did. And last but not least, we have the Soul Saber. It is the most basic of basic pieces of equipment for Celis here, 109 attack, abysmally low, unique soul break, runic blade, absorb enemy black magic cast at the user to restore one ability use. That is a crucially clutch ability. You'd rather get that effect from Indomitable Blade off her Excalibur sword, but if you don't have that, then this would suffice in a bind. It's just this soul break is a little bit dated now with the fact that Indomitable Blade actually combines this with five physical attacks that 
do a reasonable amount of damage. So, you do want to have this effect in your arsenal, preferably from her Super Soul Break instead of this unique, but again, it is in certain situations where you're in magic-based battles, this effect really is indispensable. Your percent chance on drawing this guy right here is about 2.40%. I want to avoid it at all costs because I already have Indomitable Blade. But again, for newer players, if you don't have this effect in your arsenal, you will want either this or Indomitable Blade, whichever you can get your hands on. And that is it for the relics on the banner. So I'm going to shoot over to the draw portion of the video and I will be back. So we've arrived at the portion of the video where we're gonna knock out some draws here. We're gonna do at least 111 pull on this banner, I think. But let's see what the 100 gem yields us. Probably nothing, as always, but we could get lucky. Crazier things have happened. But they did not happen today. Final Fantasy VI, I like a lot. So I really feel like I should earn an 11 draw on this. I really want to, you guys. Even though I already beat the Sid mission, I still, just for some reason, just love Final Fantasy VI. I want stuff for Celis and Kefka. Celis, Kefka. Only 205, no OSB for Celis. That doesn't mean we didn't get her BSB. Moment of truth. Oh my gosh, I already have that. They're doing that to me a lot recently. But I did not have that. That is Kefka's burst soul break. Dancing mad. I am not mad about dancing mad at all. Hmm. So for an 11 pull, that was not bad. I mean, I already have the Imperial High Blade, and I have plenty of Final Fantasy VI synergy already. So, I'm not really sure about that, but it is what it is. At least we got a Mage Burst Soul Break here. Kefka 2. Alright guys, the draws have been done. We did only end up with a 2 of 11. One of them was a dupe on General Leo's sword there, so I'm not too thrilled with that. But, I am very happy that I did pull the Dancing Mad Burst Soul Break for Kefka here. I really need Mage Burst Soul Breaks, and now between Kefka, Adia, the Master, I have well on my way to getting a good Mage team here. So, with that being said, I hope you guys have great luck on your pulls. If you decide to skip this Final Fantasy banner, there is nothing wrong with that. The Anniversary banners do have a lot of great stuff, but for me, I just have a love for Final Fantasy VI that would not let me avoid doing this relic draw. As always, this is Nazdarachi. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to follow along for plenty of more episodes coming in the future, and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Peace out, you guys. Later.